So with that being said, um, I would love to walk you guys all through the agenda today. And then um, after that, I'll be turning it back to our CEO, Giovanni. Um, so first and foremost, uh, today we will go through um, our topic, digital transformation, and how it was a necessary disruption uh, based on the events that happened in 2020 from the pandemic to the other global events. How did that affect and change um, consumer behavior? What are some of the marketing challenges that we will be facing in 2021? How customer experience is shifting digitally day after day? Um, and what are digital transformation trends to look for in 2021? After that, we will conclude the webinar with some Q&A. Um, and now I would love to turn it back to Giovanni. Thank you, Dia. So before we dive into the main content of the webinar, I would like to ask you this question. Uh, in 2020, who led your company's uh, digital transformation? Uh, your CEO, your CTO, or COVID-19? So I'm going to launch the poll. You will be able to answer the question on the screen. I'm going to give you maybe 10, 15 seconds. There are no right or wrong answer. So thank you for, for participating, guys. Um, as you guys said, it's COVID-19. Um, most of you have found the right answer. So for people who don't know, digital transformation is an integration of digital technology into all areas of a business. Uh, it's all about changing the way a business interacts with its customer and how they provide a consistent experience whenever they they are or where they are located. The COVID-19 pandemic triggered an acceleration in digital transformation like it never happened before across all the industry. And the trend is set to continue in 2021. In 2020, digital transformation first company to change their business model and adapt to a new market reality. What is interesting about this is it's not the company that are driving this change. This change is being driven by the customer. The pandemic has changed customer lives forever. Before we dive deeper into that subject, I have another question um, that I would like to, to ask you. How long does it really take to form a new habit. So 50 to 100 days, 100 to 200 days, 200 to 300 days. I'm gonna give you like 10 to 15 seconds to answer a question. Good. So most of you guys have answered between 50 to 100 days. It takes an average of 60, 66 days for a new behavior to become automatic. So if we think about it, we are close of 365 days from the beginning of the pandemic. So customer online behavior habits will stay the same. However, customer expectation um, will always keep increasing. Online users are becoming smarter, more educated, and they know how to use the new technology. I would like to share this quote of um, Charles Darwin, and we can tweak it for the business. It's not the strongest companies that survive, nor the most intelligent that survive, is the one that is the most adaptable to change. So as entrepreneur, CEO, CTO, business owner, think that way for your business. So now let's see how customer behavior has changed in 2020. 
All right, so let's start with the work. Um, the biggest impact of COVID-19 has been remote work and how it democratized the digital workspace. Now, that being said, not all organizations from various industries with different positions were ready for it. Um, here is a fun fact. Uh, by end of 2021, at a 25 to 30% of workspace currently working remote, and we will continue to see those numbers rise. Now, due to this shift, we saw a huge increase of 20% of Zoom daily participants. Yeah, if we talk about learning now, 65% uh, of households with children we put to use uh, online learning. Um, just thinking about it, where you're expecting to see a six years old child taking an online class. No, we are not ready for that. Parents were not ready, children neither, and the school neither uh, for this transition. That has been an adaptation for schools. Um, and it, it's still not perfect, but e-learning will keep improving in the future. It's said to continue in 2021 with a better customer experience. So let's take a look at communication and information. Now, of course, due to the pandemic, in-person communication has declined. Now, digital media has been recognized as a robust power to form how we experience this world with the shift that happened in 2020. Just simply thinking about social media's impact on BLM and the elections. Now, that changed the way we consume information and engage and take decisions based on the consumption of this data. But if we look, uh, take a look on the travel and mobility has changed also uh, our behavior. People have been traveling less, uh, doing less miles. Um, domestic travel has increased exponentially. I, I didn't hear anyone uh, complaining about traffic issues in 2020. Um, so travelers have been flocking also to Airbnb more than hotel during the pandemic, spending more time with their family at home, with their friends, and doing you know, outdoor activities. So it's been a huge change in the way we travel and, and the way we, um, we move in the country. Same thing with shopping and, con and consumption. So the new consumer behavior has been all areas of life, from how we work, to how we shop, to how we entertain ourselves. Now, these rapid shifts, have important implications for retailers and consumer packaged good companies. So we, what we've noticed and seen is a surge in e-commerce, preferences for trusted brands, large, large baskets, which is larger carts and reducing the shopping frequency, shift to stores closer to home and increasing food deliveries like Amazon, um, Whole Foods, uh, Postmates, all of the above. Yeah. The life at home has, has changed, literally. Um, and we think about it, it can be funny. Um, we didn't expect it to have, you know, couple working uh, in the same time, home um, on Zoom, and the same time having the kids taking their online uh, classes, using Zoom as well, and losing internet connection, uh, dropping down. Um, has been a, a huge adaptation for family uh, life. Home became a workplace and also um, a life place. So it was hard to balance both of them has been a, a real challenge for, for families and individuals. Which that builds on it, the play and entertainment. Now that everybody moved and shifted to working from home um, as well as sc homeschooling, now that gave us much more additional time uh, for video gaming, um, also for digital entertainment as well. Now, a very interesting fact that we've found is that Disney Plus achieved in five months what took seven years for Netflix. And health and well being has been also a huge change in our behavior. Um, we were more taking care of ourselves, um, in-house fitness. Um, we talk about telemedicine. It was an increase of telemedicine. Um, looking for organic 
natural fresh product um, has been a, a huge change in our, in our behavior around health. And of course, you know, taking vitamins, try to be protected from, from COVID-19. So everybody was really focusing on their health in 2020. That's interesting that um, we have covered uh, in, in days that should have took for multiple years. So example, telemedicine grew 10 times, 10x in 15 days. 25% um, of the US worker were working remotely in 2020. 250 million people are engaging in remote learning in only two weeks. And as Diaz was saying, seven years of online entertainment only in five months. This year, we have learned just how quickly customers can adapt to new technology, stay connected with people they love, how to shop and access essential online services. Digital technology has transformed consumer habit. As market trends and customer expectations evolve faster than ever in 2021, businesses must innovate at pace. In the digital economy, speed of implementation, cost of value to the organization and customer, as always as competitiveness, will measure the success of your digital transformation. A famous quote from Steve Jobs, technology is nothing. What is important is what you have a face in people that they are basically good and smart. And if you give them tools, they will do wonderful things with them. Technology has changed habits. Mobile devices, apps, machine learning, automation, and much more allow customers to get what they want almost exactly at the moment they need it. This new te digital technology has caused a shift in customer expectation, resulting in new kind of modern buyer. Today's consumers are constantly connected, app native, and aware of what they can do with technology. But at the end of the day, customer experience comes first. Think customer, think technology, and then think innovation. Businesses need to adapt to all those of customer behavior change. With customer gaining control over the way company deliver experience, it's time to reshape consumer decision journey that meet their demands. Now, data is everywhere. Um, if we use data analysis the right way, we can find answers to questions about how people act as individuals, what their values are, and what phase of life they are in. It's all about how we can collect all the data points and then deconstruct the data points. This will provide an ample amount of ways for us to customize the messaging to our end user. Now, how consumers get information currently is digitally. We've seen TV has made a comeback and a decline of out of home advertisement. Where consumers purchase, 17% in online grocery shopping, increase in online grocery shopping, surge um, in telemedicine on the go consultant, and then decrease in travel retail. Now, what consumer purchase? Personal disposable income not expected to actually recover back pre-crisis level until Q2 of 2024. How consumer experience we shaked up the consumer value, loyalty shook up, and then consumers are forced to try new things. From a digital marketing standpoint, what will 2021 bring? The global pandemic had an impact on every single businesses. Customers have changed where and how they engage with brands or services and marketing spending. Based on HubSpot studies, digital leaders across the industry mentioned that they plan to spend an average 25% more on digital in 2021. And here I want to focus on three 
uh, big aspect for marketing. One is an omnichannel strategy. It would be an important factor, of course, for B2B businesses and B2C, including podcasts, virtual events, email marketing, social media, organic traffic, paid traffic. We need to combine everything to uh, combine all the touch points from the customer and users. Another important uh, aspect to focus will be increasing digital engagement to align with the customer journey. Based on all the data that we have been collecting, we can tell that the buyer journey across all industry have changed in 2021, in 2020, sorry, at least 20%. So it's crucial to be able to engage with the user and create multiple touch points. The other aspect where a business that should focus is uh, customer loyalty. A positive and personalized experience leads to a better review and referral. When you deliver a, a customer expectation, you grow brand loyalty and businesses. In fact, 77% of customers that they are happy will refer your company to your family, to family and friends. And another 52% we recommend you on the social media platform. Create customer experience, personalized experience, bringing you loyalty. Digital transformation and customer experience go hand in hand. 2021 should be the year of getting to know the customer all over again. The pandemic has disrupted customer behavior like nothing before, and it's becoming clearly that we won't be able to completely back to normal when it's done. Amazon, Instacart, Uber Eats, Apple Pay, and much more company has disrupted customer experience in 2020. People had time to realize what they want and how they want it. They are currently planning to spend their money or investment when everything will be back to normal. Customers are expecting one-click purchase, better quality service, fast delivery, and more transparency from businesses. Customer experience starts from the first touch point to project completion or when they receive their product home. By 2021, more than 40% of all data analytics projects will involve customer experience. Customer-centric marketing will be critical in 2021. So those are very in some interesting facts and numbers that we found. Now, 54% of all consumers globally say they will have a higher customer experience expectations than they just did just one year ago. 68% of consumers say that a brand's perception becomes positive when companies send protective customer service notifications to them. Now, 64% of people find customer experience more important than price when it comes to making the, that purchase. 52% of consumers say they have made additional purchases from a company after a positive customer experience. And last but not least, which is very interesting, millennials are the only demographic group among Americans who tell more people when they have a good customer experience rather than a bad one. No one could have predicted that 2020 would bring. Across every industry, we have learned the true meaning of digital transformation. That is, reimagining businesses to better service customers and understand their needs, and having the agility to respond to changing circumstances. 2021 will still be a learning experience. And as marketer, we should question ourselves about our client's expectation, fundamental question. And hear some of them, who they are, what they do, what they buy, 
when they buy, how they buy, how much money they have, what makes them feel good about buying, what they expect of you, what they think about you, what they think about your competitors. Digital marketing is one of the fastest changing industry out there. Is your marketing strategy is not agile, it won't adapt. Here, how 2020 was supposed to look like. It was the time to collect data and to learn about customer online behavior change. Has been a change in their behavior in 2020 compared to the previous year. So did we collect it temporary data, transactional data, user data? And if we have done that part, 2021 should be focusing on improving your data quality, improving the customer experience with technology based on data, using cross-channel marketing, personalizing your marketing, and implementing machine learning. If you have not shifted yet to digital transformation, it's not too late. 2021 is the year for it. A digital transformation strategy starts by asking three fundamental questions. Number one, where are you today? Where do you want to be tomorrow? The last one, what are you going to do to get there? And I want to share seven experience with digital that you should implement. Now, you got to scale up your digital transformation investments to keep up with the trends and how everything is going. Now, optimizing virtual interaction, increasing contactless solutions, implement productive solu solutions using AI, co-creating your company vision with customers, reimagining a digital workspace and implementing neuro net neuromarketing in customer experience. We have been through all this presentation in, in digital transformation. Um, we should focus and remember a couple of keywords here. Customer experience is one thing that we have to focus and collecting data to improve the customer experience aspect will be fundamental for this transition in 2021. But now I want to go over some uh, question answer. I'm going to leave you um, maybe a couple of seconds to ask them in the chat. Okay, so I'm gonna go over some questions here. One of the question is which industry does this digital transformation apply to? That's, that's a great question. Um, that impact all industry uh, from, from of course e-commerce, uh, insurance, automotive, software industry, uh, tech, logistic, uh, most of those industry has been uh, disrupted by online behavior in, in 2020. So we are expecting uh, a change and it's time to adapt uh, digital transformation. Another question that we got here is, um, when everything is open, how confident are, are you that customer online behavior won't be like before COVID? Um, that's a great question too. Um, as we were answering and as you guys answer during, during the webinar, most of the habits to, to change our habits take, you know, between 50 to 100 days. 
So all those new behavior have already been implemented and they have changed. Um, so some of them will, will start to trend to normal, but won't be back to normal because we already used to. Um, what is the question we have here? What is no marketing and customer experience? So this is a, a great question um, where customer experience and, and no marketing are kind of connected. Um, no marketing will help to the psychology to understand the, the user purchase behavior in the, in the decision making decision. Um, but we will talk more in detail and it's something that I, I wanted to, to end the webinar too. Uh, a next webinar in, in April 29, where we will focus on, on the digital customer experience. So we're gonna touch based on, on the marketing. Another question I have here is, um, do you think there will be a boost in the fashion e-commerce in 2021? Um, I think so. <laughs> um, I'm not really uh, uh, someone that consumes fashion product, but uh, yeah, we, we would have an increase uh, in e-commerce for sure, uh, people are uh, spending more time online and, and buying from you know, multiple um, brands. Uh, the key will be to establish a brand at first and after we will be able to, um, to boost uh, e-commerce sales. Um, what will be important for the e-commerce industry is to collect the data from user to transactional data to have a good understanding how they purchase their product, why they do it in that time. So AI and machine learning will be crucial for the e-commerce industry in the following years and in 2021. Another question, great, we had is much of those information seems to be focused on B2C marketing. Do you think B2B is experiencing similar shift in marketing trends? The, the question, the answer is yes. Um, Smart Boost has already collected data uh, from B2B businesses that they are experiencing this shift. Um, a quick uh, answer to that question is um, the cold calling, uh, since people are not um, working from the office more from, but from home, uh, we see in decrease on lead generation from cold calling um, email marketing got, got an increase. Uh, we have seen um, a change of behavior on social media where the, the engagement is, is different uh, than before. The, the search uh, for business is different also using more referral traffic. Um, the way people are looking for services has changed. So yes, uh, B2B, industry has been disrupted and need to switch to a digital transformation. There's a question I have here is, what do you think are the best methods of collecting customer data in the coming years? Um, if you guys cannot uh, have a data scientist, um, you can ask Smart Boost. We have some tools and some already process in place to collect data, um, but that's, that's the key. Uh, we need to link user data with transactional data, purchase data, um, and that thing coming from any CRM, Salesforce, HubSpot, um, QuickBook, Anywhere where you collect transactional data, you need to, to find a way to, to link with, with user data. 
you should be able to see the funeral from, from top to bottom uh, and be able to be backwards. I think I went to all over the question here. I think Marina, you're managing all the Q&A. Did I miss one? Um, did we talk about customer loyalty programs? Somebody asked, will customer loyalty programs continue to have a relevant role in engaging and developing customer loyalty? Yeah, that's a great question too. Um, customer loyalty uh, is key. We, we need to have our customer becoming evangelist and um, one of the the brand that I'm, I'm thinking is is Starbucks that is doing amazing in that um, in that program where they they engage through the app um, and in the first way that they they were collecting data is offering uh, free Wi-Fi but in exchange of their email and and from there uh, they increase their customer experience to a, a mobile app where they engage with them um, and offer a multiple product. Um, Starbucks has been one of the, the companies that, that didn't really need to change the way they were doing during the pandemic. They were ready for it. Um, so it's, it's an example that as a B2C level we can take um, to uh, implement you know, customer loyalty program can be great. Um, there question. is some, yeah. yeah. There is somebody anonymous here um, saying, "Do you believe remote work will continue to be a trend in the coming years?" Um, absolutely. Um, all of the companies and the corporations are shifting. Um, everybody that can work from home and remote, they are shifting towards that trend uh, that will democratize the commercial real estate market, and also will help boost. Uh, based on some numbers and analytics, we'll boost um, actual performance for clients and customers based on cutting down uh, gas time, cutting down communication time. So definitely we see the trend of uh, the remote work increasing more and more and more, especially with the massive corporations out in San Francisco, like somebody like Salesforce, Twitter, all of these companies are going fully remote. Thanks, Dia. Um, we have other question here. Um, is there any unique example of digital marketing you have seen in 2020, 2021 that stand out that you can share? Um, we have a couple. I'm going to start by the B2C side. Uh, marketing influencer has been um, like a, a really good uh, strategy to implement in 2020. Um, people are spending more time on social media and we see an increase at, at this level. On the B2B side, uh, podcast has been uh, like key and is going to keep increasing in 2021. Um, webinar and podcast are, are a good way to share um, to customer and also uh, user guest uh, the vision of the company and also um, very important information. Gio, we have a good question since I'm from the content marketing department. Uh, we have a question. Given the significant changes in Google and search behaviors, do you think content marketing is going to play a bigger role in 2021? Should businesses start considering a bigger budget for this aspect of digital marketing? Yeah, that's a great question. And Marina, we have been talking about that uh, many times. Um, and I think Dia was, was saying in the webinar that the way people consume content is changing. Um, people are getting more educated. Um, so we, we should adapt the content. And um, recently, my, uh, my son was, uh, was using YouTube and, and click on the button. And it was like, um, a VR button. And I realized that most of the video are accessible uh, from VR. 
Um, so yes, um, it, it would be important um, to, to adapt new content uh, to be able to meet the customer expectation. Um, once again, let's try to understand what is the, our customer needs and after we'll be able to adapt the right content for their needs. Speaking about of, uh, mobile apps, how important do you think making software is in this transformation? Um, that's key. Software is a broad word that we can call about just web application or mobile application. We believe uh, in Smart Boost and, and based on some uh, research um, that in the next two to five years, most of the company <clears throat> We have custom application to increase customer experience. So web application, mobile app are the important part, sorry, <clears throat> of the of the digital transformation. And my advice, and based on what we have seen, if something that we should start implementing right now, it's time to do it. Um, we have enough data um, to, to build uh, those tools. Let's focus on the customer experience first. Uh, design it an app that is for our customer, and after we'll be able to uh, um, to deliver a unique experience. And based on that, um, I just remind myself I, I've been to uh, to BMW for service, and uh, I received an automatic text message with a link. Um, that link opened an app a web uh, application app where you're able to see all the tests that the core passed and, and what's the next steps. So it seems like some of uh, those uh, big firm already started to implement um, mobile application, or web application to offer and deliver a better customer experience. After right now, we have a great question also about uh, content marketing and social media, right? Yeah, we have one question about social media. Um, what's the next big social media trend you see coming? Um, it's it's hard to to say. Um, I say every every business is different. Um, social media are different for every industries. Um, that's why data uh, play a very important role of um, trying to identify what is a social media channel that they should focus on. Uh, because with the rise of uh, TikTok, um, YouTube, uh, Instagram stories, we talk about LinkedIn and Twitter stories. There is so many ways to communicate and engage on social social media that. Um, Right now, it's it's hard to guess. Um, so the best way is to use data solution. And if we don't have data at the beginning, my recommendation is to to test out um, those social media platform. Uh, try to um, create unique content, share it, and and measure the success of it. Based on that, we'll be able to uh, to implement a new strategy. So the the future of social media is really to customize uh, social media to, uh, to the customer expectation. I think that takes us into the next question really nicely since it's part of social media. Um, somebody asked, with the rise in customers wanting to support companies that align with their ethics and expecting companies to speak out about ethical and social issues, do you think ethical marketing will become part of more companies' marketing strategy? Yeah, I, see. I I deeply believe in that, and a lot of companies has been um, start to involve um, in in the community uh, to be involved um, in um, in different aspect um, with with the the user with the customer. Uh, I think it's important for company to connect um, in many ways with uh, 
with their customer or with their audience. So yes, um, they're gonna speak out more about ethical and social issues than before. We have seen that with uh, with BLM um, last year in 2020. Um, some big tech company also um, share uh, what they are thinking about, you know, uh, the election in 2020. So we see that um, they are taking um, an ethical part of it. I think I have, that is a question for you, Marina. With people spending so much more time online, do you anticipate facing any risks of content desensitization? That's a big word. Thank you for um, the person who asked that question. Um, as businesses create more content and noise in the digital theater. And yeah, I definitely agree with what Gio said about um, creating content that resonates with your audience. It needs to be unique. It needs to be meaningful. We're, we are past the days of just, you know, putting out content, putting out things online, just to say we did it. Um, we're more focused on the consumer and what they're looking for. So I think that would be a big, um, a big way to kind of avoid that content desensitization as, as this person asked. Thank you, Marina. There is another question about um, how should the company begin the process of implementing no marketing in CX? Um, in the customer experience, uh, no marketing start from, from data. Um, and there is many ways to, to collect um, online data behavior, um, different tools um, that, um, that can provide really good insight about, about user. Um, machine learning would be key also uh, to start implementing no marketing. Um, but after it's gonna be how to, to transcript um, those data points, those data sets to uh, no marketing tactics. Um, that will be the hardest part in tech times. So if you want more information about no marketing, uh, it's something that SmartBoost can, can, can answer and develop uh, in person with you guys. I think we don't have uh, more questions for today. Um, it was really great to, uh, to, to talk to all of you guys. I hope that um, we answer to all your questions. Um, keep in mind that digital transformation is in 2021. Um, maybe start thinking about those questions, where you, want, where you want your business to be, where are you today? what will be the next steps, what your customers are expecting from you, uh, what type of technology they want, and that will help you to, to start implementing digital transformation. So thank you for joining the webinar. Um, I wish you, all of you, an amazing day. And uh, I invite you for the, the next webinar that will be on April 29. Um, the topic will be how we connect the dots with digital customer experience, and that will include normal marketing. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and see you on April 29th. Thank you, guys.